Hi guys, I hope you're fine. I'm back from my vacation and I know that I'm late to the show, but I still wanted to do this video because it's a great use case to showcase the response sets in Aurora. Um, so I prepared a virtual machine that did not yet get the, the patch and a document exploiting the Folina vulnerability. Um, here is an Aurora light. This is what you can get for free from our website. It only requires that you fill out that form and um, subscribe to that um, mailing list. And then you can install Aurora with Aurora agent install. It contains all the rules for um, the Windows platform. and writes its logs to the application log by default. So when it's completely started up, you should see events in here. Yes. So Aurora agent started, it's installed. Uh, what we can do now is just run the document, open the document. And it fetches the payload from from a Linux machine, a virtual machine that I have running here. Uh, I prepared the payload to run uh, Calc via PowerShell. The virtual machine is not very fast. I know that. Maybe I should give it another CPU. And now we see that uh, calculator has been popped up. But it's not uh, directly a calculator step. But I run PowerShell to uh, in to run an encoded command, which is Calc.exe. So to to make it more um, real world, a real world example, uh, because we would see that many many sigma rules in Aurora triggered on that event, especially when we see like a PowerShell running from an uh, from a lolbin and uh, Microsoft Windows um, binary. We we should also see like in this case it's a lolbin process by uh, office applications uh, and other rules trigger when we make it more real world and not just pop calc. Uh, there are other rules that trigger like uh, alternative PowerShell hosts and run uh, uh, medium level rules. They have only the rule level medium but the, the important rules are here. And what I already did is that I looked at the rules that are the most specific ones um, figured them out. The ones that trigger and are very specific are these two. The s diagon host calling suspicious child process and um, execute arbitrary commands um, using MSDT provided by Nasreddin and the other one, uh, other people from my team. And now what we do here and uh, what we can do is um, we can provide a response set. A response set is um, is, a, is a rule that um, gets executed when uh, one or more rules trigger. Like uh, in this response set, we, we give the response set a description and uh, and a response, a single response, and we can list rules that would trigger this response. In our case, we use the predefined response kill. We say that it should only kill processes of low low um, privileges, uh, running under low privileges, sorry. Um, it should kill all ancestors and it should work recursive. I have a slide for that in our Aurora um, slide deck. Just just a quick look. So when a rule triggers, um, it identifies a certain process. Ancestors means that it walks up the process tree. Recursive means that it would also walk down the process tree in other um, branches. Uh, and low privilege only means that it would stop at, um, pro at processes that are running uh, with higher privileges, like system processes and so on. Um, this low priv only is used for all cases in which there is phishing involved because the, the processes like WinWord that spawns uh, CMD uh, with executing further commands, this would run, would run in the user context and not in the system context. 
We wouldn't use the low priv only, for example, in cases in which we have a network worm spreading via uh, a Windows service running under network service or local system account. Because in that case, we would also want to, to kill processes, maybe not all the ancestors, but kill the process um, running under a high privileged um, user. So, but let's get back to the virtual machine. In our case, what we would do then, I, I there are other response set that you can already use. Um, Aurora Light ships with a, re with a recommended response set by us. Um, you can use that. Uh, Aurora Light is limited to five uh, sigma rules that can um, trigger a response. But there is also, but there is already one that you can use as a template, and I used it to create my Folina uh, response set. So, but what we have to do when we use uh, a certain response set or want to use a certain response set is that we have to install Aurora uh, with that um, response set um, configured. So I say configure uh, ach, ach, response set uh, response set for Lina, and I have to activate the responses. Activate responses. Uh, if you don't use that flag. Um, the responses would trigger in a simulated mode. So every action that would happen with that activate response flag set does not happen uh, but appears in an event log entry. So <laughs> it's a simulated block in that case. Okay. Activate responses, response set. This should work now. I hope I didn't type anything wrong. Okay. So Aurora gets installed, starting the Windows service. Oh, I have to remove all the remaining processes so that we can see more of what's going on. Um, uh, this should work. Okay, now we have configure the response set, activate the responses, and what we do now is rerun, restart, and open the, the malicious document again. And then we see triggering, and we see everything dis disappears. It doesn't, does not only kill the win word, but also the sub-processes and parent processes up to a certain level, as I said. And we see the the actions here in the event log. So you'd see that it killed WinWord and MSDT, uh, the processes that have been selected for the kill. Um, and yes, that's it. I hope to li you liked it. Uh, quick demo. I I plan to do more videos like this uh, in a timely manner. So. If I'm not on vacation, I will do this more um, quickly after an exploit gets published or to make it uh, more relevant for you. I have hope you have a nice day. See you the next time.